Hello, welcome to my first how-to video on web mapping. Uh, we're going to start with the simplest of simplest web maps uh, using leaflet.js. Uh, basically going to build from scratch a website with a simple leaflet map with a few markers on it, uh, much like you see here at leaflet.js.com on their front page uh, as their demo, uh, but we'll do it from, from scratch. So leaflet is an open source JavaScript library uh, for mobile friendly interactive maps. Um, Basically, you can do all sorts of great things with it, uh, but it will let you add raster tile layers and uh, consume GeoJSON and draw various things on your map. Um, also allows for interactivity and zooming and all this fun stuff that we expect from, uh, I guess, what people call slippy maps. Uh, but it's fantastically easy to get started. So let's just dive right into it. So I'm going to set up a new web project, uh, which I can run on my local web server here. So I'm going to say mkdir. Uh, leaflet dash intro and let's cd into that and let's open that up in my text editor um, so to start I'll usually just go get a HTML5 template and I'll just google for that so HTML5 template uh, will just give us a good framework to get started um, so let's see what we got. This one from SitePoint is usually a good one to start with. So I can copy and paste HTML5 template. And um, this thing is requesting an external style sheet. So I'll get rid of that. It's also requesting an external JavaScript that doesn't exist. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'll change the title to my first leaflet map. And we can get rid of this meta stuff. And by now you're probably thinking, why didn't you just type that from scratch? It's only like eight lines, but anyway, uh, let's save that as index.html and leaflet intro. And there it shows up in the text editor. So we know we're good to go. Um, I'm running a local web server on my machine here. So let's go to localhost slash my user account slash leaflet dash intro. Boop. All right, and we have an empty website, uh, but the title says my first leaflet map, so we know it's working. Let's throw a little hello world in there uh, just to make sure it is loading. Okay, so we've got a simple bare bones web page and we're ready to put a map into it. Um, so the first thing we need to do is include the leaflet library. Um, so if you click here on uh, the leaflet docs uh, or on the leaflet site, you'll see a download page and on here, we have a leaflet hosted on a CDN, so we don't have to download it and save it and host it. Um, so we can just grab both of these. So remember, you have to always grab the CSS. Um, rookie mistake is to just get the JavaScript file, and then uh, once you start loading things, your tiles are all out of order and things don't work when you drag the map, and you'll be confused, and then you'll realize you forgot the CSS. So uh, I'm going to paste in the script tag at the end of my body. And let's copy and paste the CSS and put it up here in head. And there we go. Um, so I've loaded the library. Let's load. Let's reload my site and let's uh, inspect traffic here and see. Just make sure that we are actually loading everything. So I'll look at the network, uh, everything, and I got my leaflet JS and my leaflet CSS. So everything's loading just fine. Uh, that's great. So now um, to get started making a map, uh, we actually need a first. We need a div to put the map into. So uh, any div will do. Uh, you just need to give it a certain ID, and then remember what that ID is, so you can call it later on. Um, so let's create a div. Let's get rid of our hello world and just say div, and give it an ID of map container. Okay, so this is what's important because we need to reference this ID when we actually create the map. Um, to do that, we need to write some JavaScript. So let's create a script tag that we can just put some JavaScript into. Um, and what I'd like to do, uh, I'll just actually go back to the leaflet homepage and they have some good code snippets so you can copy and paste. So these are great for getting started. Uh, there's no reason for me to, to reinvent the wheel here. I'll just kind of paste them in and talk about what they're doing. Um, 
this line of code won't work the way it is right now because it is referencing a container called map and our container is called map container. So I'm going to copy and paste that. Um, so what we're doing here, let's get rid of this guy for now. Uh, we're saying uh, create a new variable called map and it is going to be equal to l.map. So l.map is uh, how you create a new map object. Um, so this this new leaflet map is what we're going to be referencing later on when we start adding things to the map, um, but we have to instantiate the map first. So um, let's do instantiate leaflet map. Uh, so all we pass in is the div that we want to put the map into. We can also pass in, if you look at the docs, let's go to the docs. Uh, if you look at map, you will see that uh, you can also pass in an object that's got options in it, and these are all the options you can do. Um, interaction options, map state options, that's not what I was looking for. Anyway, um, you can pass in uh, a center point and a zoom level. Um, this is a little bit different than the one that was on the home page, and I'll show you kind of how that works, but let's go back to the home page. And I'll paste back in what I removed before. So instead of passing in an object uh, when they instantiate l.map, uh, they actually do another method called setView. And setView has, has uh, two arguments, which are the latitude and longitude as an array. Um, so that's latitude 51.505 and negative 0.09 and zoom level of 13. Um, so for just a little bit on zoom levels, uh, the entire world uh, can be described usually in somewhere between 19 and 21 zoom levels uh, will get you down a street level. Zoom level zero is the is zoomed out all the way where the entire world fits onto a 256 by 256 pixel tile. Um, and then zoom level 19 or 20 will get you down to like street level um, so you can you know see individual properties and things like that. Um, so anyway, let's just run this right now. This should be all we need. Uh, oh, before we do that, sorry, I actually need to put in some some style up here because uh, what we would be doing here is we would be inserting a map into a div that has no dimensions because it has no content. Um, so we need to actually give it some content. So what I'm going to do is say map. Uh, so my my uh, sorry, not map, but map container. Let's make it full screen. So we're just going to do uh, absolute position. And then let's do top zero, right zero, bottom zero, left zero. So that'll make it full screen. All right, actually, I want to comment this out. I'm going to comment out the instantiation of the leaflet map. Actually, no, I won't. Let's leave it there. Let's run it. Um, so reload. And I have a full screen map now. And there's nothing in it. So I get a little hand icon when I want to move uh, that, you know, I would see when I'm dragging the map around. I do have zoom controls here, um, but why don't I see anything? And that's because we actually haven't added anything to this map yet. There's no base map, there's no data. Uh, so all we have is an empty container with a bunch of zoom controls. Uh, so when I zoom out, it is actually zooming out and keeping track of kind of where I would be looking on the globe. But because we actually haven't added a base map to it, there's just nothing to see. So the next step is to add a base map. Uh, if you look at the the example here, they actually show you uh, how to make an L tile layer. So tile layer is a method that uh, creates a new tile layer and then this add to map actually puts it on the map. Um, so it's a, a thing you have to sort of uh, get into with leaflet when you do this is that you have to create things or instantiate things and then you actually have to add them to the map and that's, that's where they actually get drawn into the DOM. Um, so uh, we can use this if we wanted to, we could copy and paste it, but I also like to use the CarterDB maps, which are great and uh, free for non-commercial use. Uh, so let's Google CarterDB base maps. And they have, um, they have Positron and Dark Matter, kind of the two most popular. So they have a, a really nice light map and a really nice dark map. These are great for putting data on top of because they're don't put too much uh, you know, emphasis on, on the background. Uh, they want you to kind of put data on top of them that will really be the, the, the point of focus. Um, but I like Positron. Let's start with Positron. Um, so uh, lucky for us, there's some great code snippets here that we can just copy and paste. Um, so 
let's do Positron. Sorry, I have to click that tab. And then we actually get a nice little code snippet we can copy and paste for use in Leaflet. So of course we need to do this after we instantiate the map. And what this is doing is now saying uh, we're going to have a variable called layer. And it is going to be an instance of l.tilelayer. And into l.tilelayer, when we instantiate it, we pass in a tile template. So this is what a this is what a tile template looks like. Um, it is a zxy tile layout. Essentially, this is a URL that will call one tile, and uh, everything you see within curly brackets is a is a placeholder. So um, this is a template where basically any tile at any zoom level can be represented and, and just called with this template. And I'll show you how it works actually. Before we, before we put it on the map, I'm actually gonna paste it into my browser. And I will swap out the, the Z for a zero. And I'll swap out the X for a zero. And I will swap out the Y for a zero. And I think we can just change this to one maybe. Yes, so um, you can see this URL called the tile at zoom level zero, which is all the way out, zoomed all the way out, and uh, location uh, x and y zero zero. And of course, because there's only one tile at zoom level zero, that's all we get. If we were to change this to zoom level one uh, and still request x and y tile zero zero, we should see the upper left tile or the northwest tile. Um, so tiles are a quad tree, or basically um, at zoom level zero, the entire world fits on one tile. Zoom level one is four tiles, and then it, uh, it increases fourfold every single time you zoom down. So if we were to change this to zoom level, uh, let's see, let's make it three. Uh, we're out, now out in the ocean because at zoom level three, there's a lot more tiles uh, to, to represent the globe. Anyway, that's how tiles URLs work, but this is a template that uh, Leaflet does all the work for you in figuring out what tiles it needs to request and put them on the map. And without further ado, let's see what it looks like. Um, one thing we are missing though, like I said before, is that we have to instantiate this layer and then we also have to add it to the map. So let's do add to map. And when we write map here, we're actually calling uh, or passing in the, the map object that we instantiated up here on line 27. So that should be all we need. If I reload this map, I should now see a beautiful base map. And if we zoom out a little bit, we will see that we are looking at London because that's where we set the initial uh, location of the map to uh, up here. So, uh, of course, I want to move that to New York. So let's get a latitude and longitude for NYC, which I'll just Google for. And I can copy and paste these decimal degree um, coordinates right into Leaflet. So this is 74. Dot zero zero five nine. That's actually going to be negative because we're in the Western Hemisphere. So let's paste that in. We'll leave it at zoom level thirteen, and let's reload. And now we are in New York. Just to give you an idea of what zoom level twelve, or like, let's do eleven. What zoom level eleven would look like gets us zoomed out to like see the entire city. Uh, and zoom level fourteen, for example, would get us all the way down to look at Lower Manhattan. And zoom level twenty. Can't do 20 with this tile set. Let's do 19. Nope, 18. I think that's as far as it goes. So yeah, now we're looking actually at the block level here in, in uh, City Hall in Lower Manhattan. Uh, so let's go back to 13, which was a good zoom level. And now we're ready to actually add some data to this map. So I can zoom. I'm zooming uh, with the scroll wheel right now. Um, can slide the map around by dragging. I can use these zoom bars, uh, or sorry, zoom controls up here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, you can actually change the location of these if you want them to be somewhere else on, on the screen. You can exclude them altogether if you want to. There's lots of lots and lots of things you can do to customize Leaflet, but this is the most simple version of it. So next thing to do is add markers. Let's go back to the Leaflet homepage and see how they implement this marker. Um, so all you have to do is call l.marker. We could set this to a variable if we want to, um, but they're here they're doing it all in sort of one line that's chained together. Um, so if we get rid of all this, let's just look at what l.marker needs. Uh, all it needs is a latitude and longitude. 
Um, let's put back the stuff we just deleted. So uh, again, just like we did with the tile layer, you have to instantiate the thing, then you have to add it to the map. Um, so that's actually where it gets drawn. And then here we're doing a bind pop-up and an open pop-up. So bind pop-up is basically saying uh, this thing will have a pop-up associated with it if you click on it. Uh, if you click on the marker, a pop-up will open and it'll have a little message in it, and that can be whatever you want. It could even be HTML. Um, and then open pop-up basically is saying it will be open by default. Um, so this one, when we land on it, was already open. We can close it. We can open it again, um, but it's already open. So I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want it to be open. Um, and basically all i got to do to customize this is change the latitude and longitude and then change the message. Um, so I'm going to actually put a few spots on the map in New York that I think are interesting. So let's do Hess's triangle lat long. So in this case, I'm just going to go get some latitudes and longitudes off of Google for some interesting sites in New York. And let's copy and paste those. So remember, I've got a negative value because we're in the Western Hemisphere. Um, so we have an L.Marker marker at this location. And then what do I want the pop-up to say? This is triangle. And I need to escape that single quote. So let's do a backslash there. This is triangle. A tiny piece of land left over after the 7th Avenue extension in 1913. It reads, well, I won't even get, I won't get into all that. Anyway, we have a little message here. Let's save it and reload it and see what our map looks like. Yes, we have a marker on the map. So we have a bona fide web map uh, with an actual piece of data on it. Uh, if I click on it, I will get that little message that I typed in. Uh, if you want to know more about Hess's Triangle, I have a blog post on it. Check it out. Um, but if you are in New York and find yourself in the village, uh, you should go stand over it, admire it, take a picture of it. It's a great story uh, about eminent domain and somebody saying, I still own a little piece of land and I'm going to put whatever I want on it. So I am just going to copy and paste this L.Marker line two more times and just change out the latitude, longitudes, and the message. Uh, so let's do uh, rice to riches. And I'll copy these. And I will do a new message that says rice to riches. The best damn rice pudding on planet Earth. And let's do flat iron building. Oops, that long. Let's get a nice latitude and longitude for the flat iron building. And paste these in. Let's change the message. Flat iron building. Triangle shaped. Whoops. Come on. Triangle shaped buildings are the best buildings. And let's reload our map. And now we have three markers. So one down here in uh, Soho where Rice to Riches is, and there's Rice to Riches. One down here in West Village, and one up here in the Flatiron District, which is the Flatiron Building. Uh, you could even put images in here or links if you wanted to into these pop-ups. Um, but Leaflet has made it super easy, uh, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel, and we don't have to you know, draw our own, own, our own div on the page and then try and figure out what the X and Y of it should be so it aligns with our point. Uh, Leaflet does all that for you. Um, so there you have it. This is the, the most simple web map you can create of uh, kind of hard-coded markers. Um, the best thing to do is once you start having more of these, you can store them in a GeoJSON data file and then you could add 50 or 100 of them at a time. Uh, or you could filter the map so you only show certain parts, uh, you know, certain sets of data or certain markers when, when a user clicks on a, a filter tab or something like that. 
Um, so lots of great things you can do with it, but this is the, the bare bones beginning. Um, so hope you enjoyed it and hope you get started uh, with your web mapping and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see in this series and I'll be uh, happy to oblige. Um, I will put this on GitHub if anyone is interested. Uh, or maybe I'll put these all in one repo for, for the whole series. Um, depends on how complicated things get. So um, just let me know. Hit, hit me up in the comments or find me on Twitter or whatever and let me know if this was helpful uh, and, and what else you'd like to see. Thanks a lot.